How's it going? Dr. Frankie here. And today I have a topic that comes up so, so often in my practice. And I think it's an important one to be aware of. And so I thought, hey, I'm going to just continue. It's going to come up from time to time in what I share with you all, because I want you to keep it in mind as you are putting yourself out there, trying to date, and also as you're, you know, in a relationship, working on maintaining a healthy relationship. So today we're going to talk about, is my partner pulling away or do I just have anxious attachment? Most of us know our attachment styles by now. It can be a huge relief to understand whether you're anxious, avoidant, or something else so that you can have some context for why you have the preferences and behaviors you do in relationships. However, self-awareness is always only the first step. Once we know what our predisposed patterns are in a relationship, we have to figure out what to do with that information in order to be successful. One of the tougher things about applying this knowledge is figuring out how to act on your feelings and reactions. If you know you have an anxious attachment, you may wonder whether your relationship insecurities or concerns about your connection with your partner are reasonable or a feeling that's coming from your attachment patterns and would be coming up even if everything is absolutely perfect. It's hard to tell sometimes which feelings to take action on and which is which to validate and accept without necessarily taking at face value. Here are the questions I want to recommend folks consider, think about when it comes to anxious attachment. Ask, one, ask yourselves when you're trying to figure out how to handle relationship concerns. What's the story you're telling yourself? When our thoughts are racing, or percolating in the backs of our minds all day while we go about trying to attend to business, we may not necessarily notice their exact content and tone, but just absorb, uh, absorb their overall feeling. An exercise can help you get some clarity on what's going on for you personally and how to relate to it. Set a timer for five minutes and free write, either by hand or in a digital document about what you're feeling and thinking when it comes to the situation with your partner. Free writing here means writing nonstop as much as possible, no pausing, no editing or changing what you wrote, and definitely no criticism at all or judgment about what you're writing. If you wanna keep going after five minutes, feel free to do that. After five minutes is up, read your thoughts back to yourself. Is there anything you notice about the overall trend of your thoughts? Are they mostly concrete concerns about the specific situation at hand? Like I'm really hurt. My partner doesn't want to come to dinner with my parents while they're in town. Or are they more broad, like an overarching feeling about yourself, your partner, your relationship in general? Like, I don't understand why my partner doesn't love me as much as I love them. Are they of a magnitude relative to the situation? Even if the feelings are intense, they didn't call when they said they would call again. I'm so mad at them. I don't want to go over to their place to hang out tonight. Or are they more absolute or extreme, edging into always never language? I never want to see them again. I don't know what I was thinking getting into this relationship to begin with. You want to be careful of that black and white thinking and really try to figure out how to kind of stay in that gray zone where you're sort of more balanced in your thinking. If you feel completely okay and you don't have to monitor for the wrong thoughts or feelings but it's helpful to practice some self-awareness around it always you want to be able to self-reflect being upset with or about your relationship is completely within your rights and if you aren't feeling secure or prioritizing or prioritizing your relationship that's a feeling worth listening to but if you notice your feelings are based in a lot of absolutes always never nothing or that a reaction to a specific isolated situation has ballooned into feeling like a verdict on your entire relationship, anxious attachment may be influencing your thoughts and your behavior patterns. What are you imagining your partner is thinking? Similarly, it could be a useful exercise to ask yourself to put yourself in your partner's shoes. What are you imagining is going on with them? If it helps to write it out, you can do that here as well. What are five to 10 instances or, or, or beliefs you imagine that you might have relative to this situation? 
Try to find a range from the more generous to the less so. Again, notice any trends, especially those towards absolutes or extreme views that you know may not be as nuanced as your partner's actual personality. Think about where those thoughts and feelings came from. If you're upset with your partner, it's totally reasonable and normal to imagine them as thinking of something careless like, I have more important things to do than meet my date's parents, or of not thinking of us at all. But if your imagination of your partner's inner monologue has them saying things like, my partner's feelings don't matter at all, they're an afterthought to me, and I could care less if they live or die, it may be a sign that you're filling in your partner's lines with your own critical, anxious attachment voice that tells you your connections are fraught with risk and could be lost at any moment. What could change as a result of communication in this situation? It's often said that communication is the key to relationships, and that's very true. It's also true that, unfortunately, it isn't a magic bullet. As an example, those of us with anxious attachment often feel that we need our partners to communicate to us that we're wanted, that we're loved and valued. We may tell them that we need reassurance. Sometimes we need reassurance too much, right? And we put too much pressure on our partners to reassure us, or that reassurance needs to come from within us. It's not inherently bad to want reassurance from a partner, especially in particularly acute times of stress or difficulty in the relationship. But the problem with anxious attachment is that reassurance doesn't stick. Our partner may tell us that we're the love of their life and they never want to be with anyone else again at 5 p.m. By 6 p.m., we may once again feel totally adrift in the relationship and like our partner is about to leave us at any moment. Reassurance feels good in the moment, but it can't grant secure attachment only we can do that from within ourselves. To apply this knowledge, think about how communication with your partner about the issue you're currently experiencing would look. Would it be sharing your experiences, thoughts, or feelings and asking for their feedback, apology, solutions maybe, or information? Or would the communication you're looking for be reassurance? To use an example, in the scenario where your partner isn't coming to meet your parents, an example of communication about conflict that might be difficult but effective would be to say, can you tell me more about why you don't want to come to dinner with my parents? It's your decision, but I'm feeling like you don't see this relationship as serious as a result. This is an attempt to resolve a concrete issue in your relationship. They are invited to give a real response. That response may or may not be helpful or satisfactory, but the conversation it's a part of is concrete. On the other hand, an example of an attempt at communication that speaks more to a recurring cycle of anxious attachment would be something like, you know how much it bothers me when you don't answer my texts, but I didn't hear from you all afternoon. Do you even love me? There's no realistic response that your partner can give to this other than reassurance, which as we've discussed is only a band-aid solution. A better way to approach this would be to ask. We've talked before about how much it bothers me when I can't get an answer to texts but it feels clear that this is something that's still coming up for us. I don't, want, I don't want me to feel ignored or for you to feel ignored or like I'm an obligation or I don't want you to feel like nagged. Can you come up with some ideas for how to make this work better? This is a solution oriented approach, right? Even if it's linked to anxious attachment, this offers a potential path forward that could improve your dynamic. The key is to be genuinely open to ideas and brainstorming, including ideas that involve you working on shifting your own expectations or behavior, or even more broadly, you know I have an anxious attachment style. Lately, I've been feeling insecure in our relationship, and I'd love to have a check-in to talk about what that means for our relationship so you aren't blindsided. This can manage expectations for both you and your partner, so they know what's going on with you and your anxiety doesn't feed into an unwanted fight or crisis. And remember, most people that are in relationship, right? They have good intentions. They're not intentionally trying to harm you. And I, it's important to think good intentions, even if we come from a history of trauma and disappointment and rejection and, you know, and pain, we all have that. We all carry some of that. But it's important to stay as grounded as you can and figure out, ask yourself, am I in the gray or am I being really black and white here? Because you want to work hard 
to stay in the gray and be flexible and assume good in your partner. Hope this was helpful. Please share, subscribe to my channel, um, and also ask questions. I love answering your awesome questions. And I will see you all next week. Take care. Big hugs.